Okay, I just want to do a quick update video on a couple of improvements that I've discovered that, that I'm now using over and above the stuff that I've done in my previous video. So what's very useful is firstly if you want excellent excellent prints with the CO10 and you want to try and minimize any artifacts especially when you get to very tall prints I highly suggest that you look at putting in brackets like I've done over here this is a very simple upgrade you just need two pieces of aluminum extrusion and I cut these brackets you can see the brackets over here um, I cut these brackets on my CNC machine in the garage and I just modeled them up in Fusion 360 and I just cut the brackets and then um, they just slot into the existing uh, T-slot on the CR10 and um, this triangular shape makes a very 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 strong bracing the machine doesn't um, move at all now and, and it makes a noticeable improvement in your printing that's the first thing I recommend you do um, if you want very very good tolerances in your prints and um, you're planning on printing very tall objects the second thing that's very useful I don't know if you guys um, are using this at the moment is um, using something like OctoPrint or OctoPi which means that uh, you can control the printer remotely and you can monitor your print let me just get you in a bit tighter so you can see what it, what it looks like so I just printed this enclosure here and inside the enclosure let me just take this off there's a little uh, solid state device um, that's running OctoPrint and um, this is controlling the printer which means you can remotely upload files um, you can set the temperatures, you can move the machine and uh, you can not have to you don't have to transfer files from the computer via uh, SD card you can send them directly um, it's just very useful because it means that if you are out of the house and there's a long print going on you can just um, get notified when it's finished and just ask someone to remove it for you just phone in and then just start another print remotely that's very useful so I just uh, designed in Fusion 360 this little box um, and it, it basically fixes onto your CO10 so it doesn't move at all when you use it um, it's now it's got vents for cooling and it doesn't move at all there's also over here um, what I suggest you do I don't know if you can see that but let me try and zoom in a bit for you over here you can what I suggest you do if you go this route the printer vibrates and that little micro SD connection to your printer that cable going in there um, will eventually vibrate a little bit loose and it'll lose connection and then you will lose your entire print so I suggest you just hold it in there with a piece of tape and that'll stop that from happening um, the other thing that I suggest you do is go on to Banggood or one of those sites and get yourself one of these little bicycle lights uh, these are USB powered so it'll, it'll work from any USB power or any USB power source and it's very very bright it's got its own aluminum heat sink on it and it's a nice way to just shine light directly um, onto your print and um, I'll leave it running and if you are very serious about light you can just get a um, also from Banggood one of those companies you can just get uh, little brackets and a little light fixture that clips on top over there and um, it just slots into place with T nuts and clips into place and um, you can have light directly down on your print which also makes a big difference from a usability perspective and uh, yeah so that's about it that's what I recommend you do uh, the only other thing that I found very useful let me just put this camera down is this build surface over here that I bought and I stuck it directly to the mirror this is um, it is called print in Z and you get plates that are flexible or you get the, just a print surface it's got a sticky backing I got the sticky backing um, and it's a very good surface very very strong 
It allows you to print um, many types of material. Uh, so I, I primarily print in PLA and PETG, but um, if you're going to print in PLA, then you don't need any heated bed whatsoever. So I don't even bother using a heated bed. So you'll save a lot of money on electricity and um, the prints stick, I would say, even too well to um, this printing Z plate. I highly recommend it. It's very good. It's quite expensive, but um, I've been using it for a couple of months and um, it lasts for a very, very long time. What I'm going to be getting in addition to this is I'm going to be getting another print surface. Uh, I'll probably make a video on it. That is, it, it holds the prints just as well as print in Z, but um, you need heat in order to print on it. And then when you stop, well, when the, the when it cools down, the part releases automatically. So it is a the best of all worlds. So you get the, the the quality of printing on glass, the fact that it releases on glass, and you get the hold down of part on par with something like print and z so I'll, I'll do a video about that when that arrives and then um, a very cheap upgrade that i recommend to a stock cr10 let me just get it to show you is where is it it's in here somewhere just give me a second is you buy yourself some of this tubing this is um Capricorn PTFE um, there's a couple of benefits of, of getting this tubing over the regular one that ships is that it's much more uh, slidey if that's the correct term inside so uh, your filament will slide through very very easily and the, the melting point on this tube is 340 degrees C Celsius which means you don't have run into any of the dangers that you do printing um, materials like a PETG or ABS or whatever um, and having the PTFE tube starting to melt which is very very dangerous from a toxic gas perspective um, tef Teflon fumes are very dangerous so this is a very cheap upgrade and it'll allow you to keep your stock CR10 print head without needing to upgrade to a full metal hot end and um, uh, you can keep the excellent print quality that the CR10 comes with stock and be able to print high temperature materials safely. So this is something I would recommend you get. I just uh, bought one meter, so I've got some extra ones in case I need it. And um, this isn't endorsed by the company, I bought this myself. So I highly recommend you get this. And um, other than that, CR10 is still going strong and um, it's a great printer. A couple, of, a couple of extra things that I recommend that makes life very easy, especially if you're using a uh, print in Z or want to keep your print bed very clean, this is applicable if you print on glass, is to get yourself isopropylene alcohol, get yourself a little tube like this, it costs a dollar, I think probably not even a dollar, like 50 cents, and just fill it up and it allows you to just squeeze down a little bit of alcohol quickly and uh, clean your bed. That's the first thing. Then uh, I think this costs also about three or four bucks. Is you get these um, these scrapers is very very sharp and then I'll try to get in for you. Let me just zoom in. Um, very very sharp on the end. You can actually cut you can actually cut paper with this, and um, this helps you release prints very easily. Um, it's, it slides under quite easily and just gives you that little bit of leverage to get that print started off the bed. Um, so you can use that one. They come as a set, this, in conjunction with one of these, which gives you, once you've got some leverage, you stick this under and it allows you to apply upward force quite easily to get your print off the bed. So these I highly recommend. Um, also I recommend, in, which works for me, it's one of the first things I printed, is if you have a look here um, at my spool over there, I designed and printed some magnetic spool holders that have got bearings in them and they just um, replace the the stock ZR10 um, spindle mount and um, because they're magnetic they just lock down into place they don't move and it allows you to put spools of any size on there just by shifting them closer or further apart so um, that, that works very well and because it's running on bearings there's almost no force needed by the extruder to turn um, that whole spool 
with very very little force it turns very easily so um, it also helps by not um, over taxing your uh, extruder stepper so that's something else if anyone's interested I've got that on Thingiverse if anyone wants it just let me know and I'll post a link for it okay another thing that I highly recommend that you buy if you're into 3d printing for safety is these yeah. you probably saw me wearing these in my previous video these are just um, gloves I also got these from Banggood they were I think like four bucks and um, this can save you from going to the emergency room or needing stitches remember I showed you this is extremely sharp like a razor blade using a lot of energy and effort when you are lifting stuff off a print bread this has to slip and um, this will cut you and this will damage you severely so I highly suggest you get some of these gloves you probably think to yourself well, why are these gloves they don't look very strong let me show you that these gloves are designed to be um, impervious to cutting so if I take in my hand take a blade and I do that again you can see that this will save your hand highly suggest you get some of these gloves the next thing that I suggest you get and this won't cost you any money is cut up an old t-shirt 100% cotton t-shirt or buy some cotton rags something like this and when your nozzles hot use this to clean your nozzle all you do is just pinch your nozzle and this will pull off any sticky residue you can have a look there that's what it looks like when you clean your nozzle then you get a, a nice clean nozzle that's uh, puts down your first layer you know you're going to get an awesome print so cotton cloth very important